Man, sometimes them dogs, they fart and it stinks. We got some fart smell in here and we also have another surprise for you. This is Luke Smith here with the Packsmith Dog Training and uh, I've got an interesting video here for you today because we're going to talk about this nasty device. This big scary uh, thing that's got prongs and it's super dangerous for your dog and no it's not. So um, I'm going to uh, start the first video that I have on correction collars because um, when here at the Packsmith we do um, positive training and corrective training together. We use what's called a balance training because if you are in a situation that you only give your dog the positive information, what they're doing right, I mean, it can make some difference and we're going to do that by and large, be the most positive that we can, but we also need to tell our dogs what not to do. So one of the greatest tools out there, the most safe and effective tool that you can use for your dog training is actually this horrible torture device that we have here. And um, people think that, oh, it's it's pokey, it's going to puncture my dog, it's going to cause irritation on the skin, and there are certain circumstances where you can get some irritations, but you will never puncture your dog. And to be perfectly honest, the, the collar is safer than even using a regular flat buckle collar. So I'm putting the collar on me, number one, because it's more interesting, and number two, because I want to show you guys that anything that we're going to do to a dog in the Paxmith Dog Training is also something that I will do to myself and I'll do it in front of you. And if you guys ask, I'll put the e-collars on and I'll shock myself at the top level. I don't care. It's not a big deal. It really doesn't hurt at all. And neither does this prong collar. So the reason that these prong collars are set up the way that they are is whenever you pull on them, which I'm doing currently pretty hard right now, what it does is it actually distributes the pressure all the way around the circumference of the collar. And what that does is that actually lessens the pressure and makes it a little bit more even. It also prevents injury from, <clears throat> from the pressure on the collar. They have these prongs that are spread wide. And what that does is that distributes the pressure over a wider band, which is better for your dog. It is going to keep your dog from having any sort of damage on the trachea, you know, where the trachea is, has got pressure on it. Um, when you're using a flat collar and you're pulling your dog around by the neck on the flat collar, a lot of times they'll get tracheal damage and we don't want that. So the other good reason for the, the prong collar is because it's got this martingale style chain. And I don't know if I can get you to see that, but there's a link back. There's a ring back there. There's a ring in the middle and then up underneath this big luscious beard. There is a, link, a ring right there. And what happens is, is whenever you put pressure, even just the slightest amount of pressure, the dog can feel that all the way around. And it's not pleasant, but it doesn't hurt. But anytime you're putting pressure around the neck, it, um, it actually will... It will cause the dog to dislike it, and they will prefer that it doesn't happen. And so whenever you put just a tiny bit of pressure, if the collar is sized properly, then it will register the dog, and the dog will work very hard to avoid that just because it's not as pleasant as not having it. So we want to use these things because it allows us the opportunity to make a lot of really fine-tuned uh, communications with our dog, and especially with walking on a leash. You want... You want this kind of tool because what it'll do is, is it'll reduce the amount of time that the dog runs and hits the end of the leash because that is, you know, hard on your shoulders and everything like that. We don't want that to happen. But what we want is, is for whenever the leash gets just a tiny bit of pressure, which I mean, you can see I'm just barely even touching it. I can feel that right now and I know which direction it's happening and I'm going to get up and move towards that direction. I know you can't see that very well on the camera, but if I pull myself in the direction, I want, I want to go that way. And so, but if I was being super rambunctious and I was going to hit the end of the collar really hard, it, it doesn't feel great. It's not great, uh, feeling in that situation. And I mean, I've got it on bare skin, which a dog has hair. And so it's even more protected than I am, but it doesn't feel great. And it gives you a good reason to not act like a fool while you're on the leash, because I know that everybody, almost every single person that calls me says my dog pulls on the leash. This collar right here actually almost fixes that instantly. I've literally had super high pulling dogs and we went into an evaluation. We put the collar on them and I just held on with two fingers to the leash and the dog, number one, didn't pull the leash out of my hand. And number two, stopped pulling almost instantly. Within a minute, they stopped pulling on the leash. And they didn't do it again for the whole rest of the day. And these are dogs that have been pulling on the leash as hard as they can for years. And it, so it's, it's a great tool to use. It does not hurt your dog. 
uh, in any way that we can, you know, that we need to avoid. It is just a little bit uncomfortable. It's a little bit unnerving, but it puts you in the position to where you can use the least amount of force. You can keep your, your energy nice and centered, nice and calm all the time. And you can show your dog that no matter what they do, they're not affecting you, which is going to put you in the position to be the best leader. Because everybody, whether they want to admit it or not, wants a good, strong leader. Even the people who want to be the leader, if they had somebody that was significantly more, um, I'm sorry, significantly better at dealing with stress of life in charge of them, then they would be like, no, that's cool. They can fix the problems for me and I can just relax. And so that's the thing that we want to provide for our dogs. We want to be strong. It is important to be strong and dominant. We need to know what dominant means. And we'll do, probably do a whole video on what is dominant. But the short answer is, is dominance is the animal who is the least easily affected. If you come at me and you bark at me and you get all loud up in my face and I keep a completely calm demeanor and I'm completely unaffected by you, you're the angry, violent um person who is a trying to achieve dominance does not actually achieve the dominance because they are announcing to everyone that they feel less dominant and that it, by their uh, aggressive behavior or by their loud behavior. They are saying that I feel less dominant and I need to do something extra in order to get back to even, you know, to get back to a place where I feel comfortable. Whereas the person who just remains comfortable the whole time doesn't have that problem. So anyway, uh, we want to use these collars and we want to use them properly. If you are one of those people that is highly sensitive about what your dog is going through, I'm going to tell you your collar is too loose. And I know that seems direct, but Ev almost every single person that I deal with um, puts the collar on and then they go, oh, I feel bad for the dog. It's collar's too loose. And what they end up doing is, is whenever the collar is loose and it doesn't, it doesn't activate on the slightest pressure, then what happens is, is the dogs end up pulling against it and don't realize until they hit it really hard at the end. And you're actually hurting your dog more. So get over yourself. Put the collar on properly, walk the dog around with your pink, with your thumb and your forefinger and don't worry about having to grip a hold of the leash or, you know, or tie it to your hips or anything like that to walk your dog around. We don't need to do that. Uh, what we want to do is we want to use it properly. Let the dog learn what the collar means and then they know the harder I pull on this the more it constricts, the more I, the, the, the more I dislike it. And so once they learn that, then they'll work really hard to not pull on the leash. And then our problem's almost solved. And to be perfectly honest, if you're not looking for really tight obedience and walking uh, exactly in one position, then you're doing pretty good. Um, we do want to add to that. Um, just buying one of these is not a complete fix for our program. We want to make sure that the dog is always walking behind us. We will be leading because the dogs don't have the capacity to understand that when they can be up front and still not be the leader. Their brains literally just don't process that until they have just dozens and dozens and dozens of hours of training. Um, they're not going to get that. So we want to go ahead and do our dogs the favor, put them in the submissive role. That way they can relax during the walk and just enjoy it, knowing that you being the leader have the responsibility of protecting and deciding when we're going to fight. We don't want our dogs having that decision because if you have an aggressive dog, that they they will choose to fight a lot more often. It's always out of fear. We have the ability of knowing that the things that we're coming across are not worthy of being fearful. And so we want to be the ones making that decision. So um, do yourself a favor. Don't get all up in your feels about it. Let your dog be subordinate to you and you'll have a much healthier time. So this is um, this is Luke Smith with the Paxmith Dog Training doing some weird stuff just to make sure that you guys know that these products are safe for your dogs um, so that you can go out there and have the very best relationship that you can with your dogs. Um, make sure that you like our Facebook page, follow it, make sure that you like our YouTube um, and subscribe to that. Make sure you turn the notification bell on so that you get all of these videos so we can learn about every little piece of dog training individually, especially in these times when we're stuck at home with these little obnoxious dogs. We want to make sure that they're not obnoxious dogs and that they're good dogs like Cinch. Let's see. There's a good dog right there. So we're going to teach you real quick where we want to put the collar on. So whenever we're dealing with the collar, you've got, uh, you've got obviously the um forgive the grubby carpet you've got the um 
prong portions. And then you have the chain portion, the martingale portion. We want to make sure that when we put it on, the martingale portion is not um, twisted at all. Sometimes they'll be twisted up and run up underneath itself like that. And whenever that's the case, the collar doesn't work properly. So make sure that that's right. We want to um, make sure that the, um, the collar runs up underneath the neck right here. We want to try to keep the chain portion of it up here on the back of the neck. It can be slightly over to the right. That tends to be pretty good, especially for walking. So um, we want to do that. Whenever we're putting these things together, we want to put it around the dog. I can't really do it one-handed. I can't get it on one-handed. I can generally take it off, but we want to make sure that we get these two prongs inside of that, these two holes. And what you do with that, the, the way you do that is, is that you squeeze together the ends. Now, I tend to squeeze from this angle. I'll grab it, and I'll have my fingers pointing kind of down the, uh, the line of the front collar, and I'll pinch it together and slide it into the other ones, and then as soon as I do, it snaps right into place. Another thing you want to know, they, these uh, little rings at the end, the, we do not want to disconnect our collar. This is actually the wrong side. But this one right here, you can actually take the prongs out there. It will come out easier. It'll be a lot easier for you to get on and off. But this will deform faster than uh, all the rest of the prongs. So we don't want to disconnect it from this part. We always want to do it somewhere from the middle, anywhere past the first one. Uh, so that whenever you put it on and take it off, it, um, it, it keeps the collar together longer. Um, I don't buy super expensive ones of these. I'll usually get them at the farm and home store. Um, you want one with a nice slick chain because we want to see how easily this rolls over here. It's not, um, it's not real coarse. It's got a pretty fine links uh, in there so that it makes sure that they roll nice and easy. And that's exactly what we want because we don't want big, big chain links in here because what'll happen is, is it'll get tightened up and then it'll get stuck there and it won't loosen back up for your dog. And it also won't tighten as smoothly so that they have, um, they, so that they have the easiest amount of, uh, the easiest time understanding that the harder they pull, the more it constricts on them. Sit here. Come here. Sit. Oh, there you go. Lay down is good. So whenever I'm putting them on, I want to um, come over here. And like I said, if you can get this angle, pinch it together, slide it in, boom, you're done. All right. No big deal. It does take a little bit of a strong hand, but not too much. Now, also, we want to talk about taking it off. We can take them off one handed. Come here, buddy. We can take them off one handed. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab it. See this little U shape right here? It'll be pointing in a direction. And we want to use that hand. So this one, the direction is pointing left. And so we're using our left hand. We're coming up over the top of the collar. And you see I'm putting all my fingers through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb on this, my finger up underneath. And while it's still taut, you can just press it down. And then it gets to this point, And then you give it a little bit of a twist and it pops right off. Another thing we want to understand about the, prong, the pinch collar or the prong collar, they're both the same thing. Um, is that we want it to sit up at the top of the neck because the neck widens at the bottom with most dogs except for like Danes and Poodles and those really long neck dogs. And so what we want is that whenever we tighten up the collar, we do not want these three rings, this ring here, this ring here, and the one on the other side, we do not want them to touch when we put a lot of pressure. We actually want the dog's neck to stop it in order for it to work properly. And the dog can't hurt themselves with it. Um, they would have uh, the amount of force it would take to get these things to puncture is more than any dog can really ever do. Um, the other thing you want to take, uh, keep in mind is you want to know the skin and the hair of the dog is like healers. You could put a collar on all day long. No problem. Uh, shepherds, sometimes the ones with the really thick undercoats have a little bit of problem. You don't want to leave it on there for a huge long period of time. You want to be able to take it off at least every day, you know, at least while they sleep. Um, I take all of my dog's prong collars off while they sleep so that they, um, so that they uh, get a chance for the next to rest. Um, and not to mention, who wants to sleep on a prong collar? That seems silly to me. So um, every time that the dog goes into the kennel, the collar comes off. But every time the dog comes out of the kennel, the collar comes back on. And that is the way that we keep our training consistent so that we have the ability to uh, make sure that they don't get uh, odd conclusions. So I'll show you one more time taking this off. Reach underneath with your hand. Put your finger underneath there, push the button, twist it off, boom, you have it. So 
if the collar is too loose and those three links uh, close up, just put another link on. They'll almost always come with more than what you need. I have three extra that came with this collar, and so that's a good thing. But um, make sure your collar's sized properly. If it's not sized properly and you still don't understand this, give us a call uh, or, or ask us on Facebook or YouTube or whatever just to make sure that we're using these things properly because if you use it too loose, you will hurt your dog. If it is tight, if it is properly tight, you cannot hurt your dog at all. So that's one of the things that you need to know when using the prong collars or the pinch collars or however you want to call them. So, um, you can go with the Herm Springer style. Doesn't really make such a huge difference. Uh, I find that pretty much anyone that you get, as long as it is, um, as long as it, is, it is not sheared off at the ends, and you see how these ones are nice and rounded to make sure that everything works better. It obviously shouldn't be pointy, but it needs to be rounded, and it definitely doesn't need to be sheared off flat. I bought one one time that, that was sheared off flat from a certain farm and home store, and um, I didn't actually get it returned in time, but it is completely useless to me because I will not put the, that on my dog. So these are a lot of good little tips about these things. If you want to know any more, just comment in the comment section below and ask us your questions.